stat paper. So the first question, under which condition states of the law, the 6 glucose molecule is broken down into 3 carbon molecules, pyruvate and lactic acid. So this concept of 6 carbon glucose breaking into 3 carbon glucose, the process is called glycolysis. So glycolysis is the major process, the first step in respiration of both aerobes and anaerobes and glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. So this glycolysis can take place with and without oxygen. So in the absence of oxygen, it leads to fermentation process. And in the presence of uh, oxygen, glycolysis enters the Krebs cycle, the TCA, followed by the electron transport chain. So in anaerobic condition, you have fermentation process, two fermentation. One is alcoholic fermentation, the other one is lactic acid fermentation. So the question here is pyruvate and lactic acid. So in lactic acid fermentation only you will have the formation of lactic acid. So the answer would be anaerobic condition in yeast in muscle cells. Why lactic acid in muscle cells is when you contract your muscles for a prolonged period, you have the accumulation of lactic acid. So accumulation of lactic acid in muscle cells. So this takes place under anaerobic conditions. So which among the following is the correct sequence regarding the flow of impulse in a neuron? So a neuron is the structural unit of a nerve. Okay. So your neuron will look like this. Yes, right. So this all, all these will be your dendrites. So this would be your cell body. So these are your axons and this would be your synapses. So here you have myelin sheets, quant cells, stroll of ranvir and so on. So how the impulse is passed or transmitted is from the dendrites. So dendrites collects impulses into the cell body and from the cell body the axon takes the impulse and gives it towards the synapse and you have a synaptic vesicle. So looking at this diagram, when you see the options, it is cell body, axon and the nerve terminal. These are the nerve terminals, that is the nerve endings. So option 4, cell body, axon and nerve terminal. So third question, in a hypersensitive patient, the systolic pressure is increased to 150 mmHg. So which part of the brain would be involved in the regulation of blood pressure? So the systolic pressure refers to the contraction. So when you write BP, you write 140 by 80, right? So this is systolic pressure and this is diastolic pressure. So this refers to contraction and this refers to relaxation. So when this is your systolic pressure, 150 mm by Hg, so which part of your brain would be involved in the regulation of blood pressure? So this is the normal BP level and this is hypertension. So this blood pressure is controlled by medulla. So your option would be medulla oblongata. Edward Jenner's contribution for the eradication of smallpox is. So here they talk about the concept of secondary response. So the cowpox infection protects the person from smallpox due to the development of more amount of antibodies. So that is the concept which he gave. So the option would be the last one. The Fahis finding that the cowpox infection protects the person from subsequent infection from the smallpox. So the fifth one, four important events given below may lead to the origin of life on earth. So this origin of, uh, origin of life on earth, so which came first and which followed the other. So based on all this, we talk about the apparent handling theory. So he said first you have water, then you have the formation of amino acids and nucleotides and then you have the complex uh, molecules, you have the formation of complex molecules and then finally you have cell. So talking about this order, it will be 2, 1, 4 and 3. So the second option. So read the following statements carefully and after the four options, the four statements, they are, they are, the question is select the relevant statements for the forest ecosystem. So relevant refers to the correct statements related to the forest ecosystem. So I will read each statement and explain you. So energy transfer in the biotic world always proceeds from the autotrophs, yes. So biotic world refers to the living world and plants, they are primary producers, if you would have seen in the food chain, so they are autotrophs. So statement 1 is right. 
So statement two, energy flows unidirection. Yes, in the food chain, the energy flows from producer to consumer and it does not reverse, right? So the second one is also right. Energy availability is maximum at the tertiary level. Now tell me an example of food chain. So we'll start from the plants. So plants are uh, eaten by the cows. Cow, say lion, eats the cow. And finally you have scavengers, say eagle. So they are the primary producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. So who will have the highest energy? Primary consumers. Sorry, primary producers and primary consumers will have more energy compared to tertiary consumers. So statement 3 is wrong. The fourth one, there is loss of energy from one tropic level to the other. Yes. So here if you have 100% energy in the primary producers, the amount of energy that will be transferred to the consumer will be only 90%. So 10% there is a loss. So statement 4 is also right. So 1, 2, 4 is right. So option 1 is the answer. So question 7. In a highly pesticide polluted pond, which of the following aquatic organisms will have the maximum amount of pesticide per gram of the body mass? So when you thought ecosystem, they were talking about or you have come across the term biomagnification. So what does this term biomagnification mean? For example, the factories let out the used fertilizers and chemicals. One such example would be the DDT. Yes? So this uh, unwanted waste enter the river waters or the pond waters nearby. So those polluted waters will have DDT along with it and it enters our rivers. So rivers will have fishes. So fishes consume these DDT and when a human eats a fish or any other bigger fishes eats these smaller fishes, this DDT is just passed on to the next tropic level because the fishes cannot metabolize, neither excrete the DDT. But it is passed on from one tropic level to the next. But here, when the concentration of DDT is 0.2 parts per million, when it enters the next tropic level and so on, when a small fish is eaten by a big fish and the big fish is eaten by a man, the concentration would be as high as 0.5 parts per million. So this is called biomagnification. So with reference to this example, the answer would be fishes. So question 8. A farmer made observation in a backwater paddy field of coastal Kerala that the paddy plants wilt during noon onwards every day but appear not the next morning. What should be the possible reason for wilting? So the reason that they wilt is that the rate of absorption is less than the rate of transpiration in the afternoon. So during the noon time, the rate of absorption is lesser than the rate of transpiration. So that is the reason that the plants, the leaves of the plants twilt during the noon and become not in the morning. So option would be A. So ninth question, you just have to observe the two experimental setups A and B and what is the conclusion that you can draw from the two experimental setups. So the conclusion would be, if you see in plant A, the shoots move up. So this is positive phototropism, that is they move towards the place or towards the region where there is light. And in the uh, setup B, you see the roots move towards the, sorry, both are in the experimental setup B on the day 5. When it is kind of mature on the 5th day, the shoots move, move towards the top, that is move, grow upward, that is positive phototropism. And roots grow towards the downward direction and this is positive geotropism. So these are the observations that you can conclude from the two experimental setups. So your option would be A, the first option. So question 10, raw banana has bitter taste while ripe banana has sweet taste. It happens because of the conversion of what? So here, raw banana has starch. Okay, when the banana ripes, when your banana is ripened, this starch converts into sugar. So your option would be starch to sugar, that is option 1. So question 11, in the following plant, sexual reproduction involves several events beginning with a bud and ending in a fruit. These events are arranged in four different combinations. Select the combination that has the correct sequence of events. Now, the correct sequence of events is first you have gibbons. 
So we will take the example of human baby. So the mother has XX and the father has XY. Okay. During the formation of this is the sex chromosome from the mother, sex chromosome of the father. But during the gamete formation, you have only one of the two. So these are gametes. So if you have X from X only will come from the mother. So if from the father, if you have Y, so the gametes are X and Y. So after fertilization, they fuse to form XY, which is the boy child, right? So the initial step will be the formation of gametes. Yes. And next you will have the fertilization taking place. So fertilization will lead to the formation of zygote. So the fertilization and zygote formation will take place in the fallopian tube. But once the zygote gets implanted after further divisions, when it gets implanted in the endometrium of the uterus, it becomes embryo. So this is your order. Gametes, fertilization, zygote and embryo. So option 2. Okay, question 12. In pea plants, rounded yellow features of the seeds are dominant over the wrinkled and new features. In a cross between two plants having the same genotypes, the following genotypic combinations of offsprings are noticed. So here, what we do is collect this, uh, select the correct combination of characters that correspond to the genotypes. So R stands for round. So when you have R, R, so this R is dominant, so this will be, the phenotype will be round, okay? And Y stands for yellow. So if you have capital Y, small y, capital Y is dominant over the small y. So this condition, the phenotype will be yellow. And you also have small r, small y. So this would be wrinkled. So when you have this condition, the phenotype will be wrinkled. So this is green. So when the phenotype is YY, sorry, when the genotype is YY, the phenotype will be green in color. So they have given you four combinations A, B, C, D. So A would be R, Y, Y. So this capital R, so it is round. Capital Y is dominant, so yellow. So this would be round yellow. Fine. So the second option, uh, the second combination so there is a capital R, so this will be round and two small y, so it will be green. So this would be round green in color. This is the phenotype. So option, uh, so third combination, R, R, capital Y, small y. So two small r, so it is wrinkled. One capital Y, so this is enough to say capital Y is dominant, so this is wrinkled yellow. So the last option would be Combination would be R, R, Y, Y. So both are recessive. So it will be wrinkled green. So from this find out which option matches. So it is option 1. So question 13. Eukaryotic organisms have different levels of organization. Select the combination where the levels are arranged in the descending order. So first we go from the basic order. So you have DNA. So segments of DNA together make genes. So, in the cell, genes are clustered. Yes, in a network-like structure, thread-like network. So, this is chromosome. The condensed form, so this is actually chromatin. The condensed form of chromatin is chromosome. So, all these are present inside the nucleus. And the nucleus is inside the tissue, sorry, inside the cell. And group of cells make up the tissue. So, this is the order in the ascending order. So first you have genes, chromosomes, nuclear, cell, tissue. But they are asking for the ascending order. So you start with tissues, cells, nucleus, chromosome, genes or DNA. Fine. So this is question number 13. So option 2 is right answer. So question 14. The gaseous byproduct of a process in plants is essential for another vital process that releases energy. Given below a four combination of processes and products, choose the correct combination. So first we'll go with option A, photosynthesis and oxygen. So what is the equation for photosynthesis 6 co 2 So this is the equation for photosynthesis. So 6 co 2 plus 12 H2O gives C6H12O6 
प्लस सिक्स हेच टू ओ प्लस सिक्स ओ टू ओके एंड रेस्पिरेशन द इक्वेशन फॉर रेस्पिरेशन विल बी सी सिक्स हेच ट्वेल्व ओ सिक्स प्लस सिक्स ओ टू गिव सी सिक्स कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड प्लस सिक्स वाटर मॉलिक्यूल्स प्लस एनर्जी सो During the process of photosynthesis, the oxygen evolved is used in the process of respiration by plants. So your option would be one: photosynthesis and oxygen.